Hey guys, so I am back again and I've got a couple of things I wanted to address because I get this question weekly, sometimes multiple times a week, sometimes it varies a little bit, but is math difficult in the respiratory therapy program? I guess it really depends on you also. Some of us are stronger in math than others, but I don't think that math is something to be scared of in the respiratory therapy program. With my experience so far, it has been a lot of basic algebra, addition, subtraction, dividing. Um, so if you haven't taken an algebra or a math class in a while, you might need to brush up on the order of operations and just, you know, your long division, whatever. Because if we don't use something, sometimes we can forget little bits and pieces. So really, it's just about reviewing that old math. Honestly, I think what gets people is they will look at equations. Like, for example, the alveolar air equation, these abbreviations and these letters and these numbers and you're thinking oh my god what do i do with this what does this mean honestly that's the scariest part is seeing all of these abbreviations and the most important thing is to get to know what those abbreviations mean because once you know what the abbreviation means you're just going to replace it with a number so for example your paco2 you know that that's going to be for the normal amount 35 45 millimeters of mercury you know that your barometric pressure is you know whatever your area is I think they go by like what like 760 or something like that oh you know what your normals are and if you see something that's really skewed you know that your PaCO2 is not going to be one that's just it's it's not gonna happen so if you know your normals that's gonna help you a lot and then also it makes it a lot less scary when you're looking at these formulas. Once you get to know all these abbreviations, it becomes so much more simple. And again, like I said, review your order of operations and repetition is huge because when you do take your credentialing exam, you're going to be expected to do specific equations and you have to be able to do them without a calculator. Now in the real world, we know there's going to be a calculator available and many of the devices we use, many of the events we use, is going to actually automatically calculate this for us. But for your exam, you do need to be able to do these equations and they don't allow a calculator. So repetition, repetition, repetition. Even if it's just writing out the standard formula a million times and make sure again that you know what those abbreviations stand for because if you don't know what that stands for, that's not going to help you when they give you the information. So write out your formulas, know the abbreviations, review your order of operations, and you'll be fine. Now, as I mentioned before, math isn't everybody's subject. So don't be scared to ask for help or ask for tutoring. If you need it, you are not the only one, okay? There are a ton of people that really dislike math and it makes it difficult for them to do these equations. So that's perfectly fine. That's what your tutors are for at the school. Maybe even a classmate that is a little bit better at math. They're there to help. So never be embarrassed about asking a question because that's what's going to help you exceed. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. You need to be curious. You need to be inherently curious and willing to learn. And if we make little mistakes along the way, that's perfectly fine. That's the learning process. One thing I will bring up, you will see much more complex formulas and equations that kind of deal with some logarithms, which is a little bit more towards the calculus side or pre-calculus side, but so far in my program, we have not been required to do these formulas. We've been required to know that they exist and that they are there because they are not so commonly used anymore. Now that could vary from program to program, of course, because there are some programs that require you to learn a lot of formulas, but in that case, you're probably going to be able to use a calculator because good luck trying to do a logarithm without a calculator. That being said, I don't want you guys to be scared of the math. Don't let that hold you back. If respiratory therapy is something you really want to do, the math is not going to be a difficult part. Just ask for help if you need it. You can find a million videos on YouTube giving you examples of all of these equations, giving you examples of different scenarios and how these equations are used. 
So I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. If you guys do have any more questions, definitely let me know. I'm always here to do my best to try to answer them. If there's anything you guys want to see, if you guys would be interested in seeing maybe me doing some of these equations, let me know. I'll do my best. I'm working on a few other videos like AVGs, things like that. I'm just looking for the best way to film them because I don't want them to be difficult to watch or to interpret. So I'm looking for some good software so I can do it on my computer, but I've got it all set up. Hopefully I'll have those out within the next week or so for you guys, okay? All right, 